Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Alex is currently away on his honeymoon, touring around America, uh, which means we've got Hank here this week. Yeah, super excited. <laughs> you know what's coming up this week? What? Well, we've got new bikes, we've got Van der Poel's new very expensive skin suit. And we've also got some exclusive Tour de France merch, because guess what, Ollie? What? Kicks off tomorrow, buddy! It does. I'm really yeah, excited. Almost as excited as you. And we're going to have a Tour de France-themed main talking point this week, which is how much do Tour de France bikes weigh today? Yeah. First up, though, we're going to have a look at some of the comments from last week's show where we spoke about cycling products that you regret buying. I know. I did enjoy that show, and I thought I'd kick off with the comment that I found on last week's show, which is from another YouTuber. I regret buying high-end components. Middle-tier stuff works just fine, and I'm less grumpy when I break it or wear it out. And he's never seen any meaningful differences in time, which is an interesting one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. It's basically why I don't like really expensive watches. As well, they just stress they you do out. The same thing. They just stress you out. They do the same thing as a ten-pound Casio fifty-meter water resist. Yeah. Anyway, next around. comment is uh, <laughs> from Strawhorn One, who says the biggest regret was buying a cheap bike from Amazon when I was younger and struggling for cash. Uh, I was desperate to get back into cycling, went for a quick purchase, didn't do any research, and all I can say is that it was good going downhill. Um, <laughs> I think so it was made out of solid steel rods. <laughs> similar to the fourth rail bridge. As for uphill, the gradient wasn't an issue as I just rolled them flat with the weight, but mm. I think the weight was measured um, for the older viewers. I think, yeah, that's a bit like what we'd say about the Amazon bike. Yeah, it's absolutely terrible going uphill, but you, yeah. can, you can kind of roll it going downhill. Mm. Yeah, if you, it's like that We're thing, isn't you. it? You buy cheap, you buy twice. Exactly that. That kind of yeah. thing. Right, next one in from Norman Lindsay. Biggest regret purchase was 45 years ago, real chamois in your shorts was just disappearing and I bought a pair of shorts with lamb's wool chamois for the winter. Advertised as a nice warm in the cold Scottish weather. Never had so many subtle sorts. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't that think is something I wouldn't make twice, that same mistake. I wouldn't regret buying the uh, GCN Castelli uh, free aero bib shorts <laughs> available in shop.globalcyclingnetwork. They have a fantastic chamois. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than those ones, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, John Burnell, he says he once bought tri bars for a mountain bike. Right. Uh, and he was a young teen at the time. He understands now why he was, why he was laughed at. Yeah, <clears throat> John, um, that's a mistake you're also not going to make twice. Uh, <laughs> Justin MBR, I most regret buying carbon rim brake bikes. I'll never forget the sound of money rubbing away when I, <laughs> where I put the brakes on. Do you know what? That's so true. You also, but I also remember that not stopping in the wet. Yeah, it's the the dawn of disc brakes, isn't it? It changed everything. Because yeah. I remember braking so hard on those rim brake, uh, on the rim brake, on rim, on carbon rims. Yeah. And yeah, you can oh, just see pants. it. It's pants though, isn't but it? You can just see it wearing away. Yeah. You know, they're thousands of pounds worth of wheels. Well, Kevin McHugh uh, wrote my favorite comment, which is, I regret buying my wife a good bike. I'm now getting dropped on every climb. Yeah. Kevin. Sorry, Kevin. Sorry, Kevin. Yeah. Don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Ollie, before we dive in to the main talking point, I just want to clear something up. Yeah. I had a quick look at uh, last week's tech show, and you said this. Yeah. And we didn't trust Hank to do the show without us there, so under our supervision. Right, mate. No faith. What do you think I was going to get up to? Uh, not sure. Mm. Whoa, 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 Hank. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here now. Thanks, mate. Yeah, anyway, excited. our main talking point this week <laughs> is about how much the Tour de France bikes weigh. Yeah. Now, Tour de France riders are the best of the best, so you'd expect they get to ride the best of the best. But the weight of their bikes, I think it might actually surprise some people. Yeah, and the thing to kick off with is that the UCI, the governing body of cycling, have set a weight limit of 6.8 kilograms. Now, this is for safety reasons, because they don't want the manufacturers to get carried away making bikes out of, I don't know, balsa wood, and they can become <laughs> unsafe. Yeah, absolutely. But to uh, give some context as to what 6.8 kilograms actually it sort of is in, mm. in real terms that people can understand. I, I, well, I got my scales out, mm. did some weighing. Did you? Yeah. So, Go on. A, typically, a five-month-old baby 
is, is about seven kilos. <laughs> Whose baby have you been weighing? Don't worry about that. On. <laughs> yeah, what's next? Uh, well, a, a pack of 70, well, 75 packs of playing cards. Yeah, I heard 12 Six basketballs. Point. 12 basketballs? 15 iPad Airs. Well, there you go. You've got an idea now of yeah. what 6.8 kilograms is. It's, yeah. not, it's not much. Right, tell you right, Ollie, that we start off this section with the reigning Tour de France champion, Pade Pogaccia and his Colnago. Now, he's riding a V3 RS, isn't he? He is. Although, uh, this year, he we think he's probably going to be riding a Yazoviet unreleased bike, which was probably the V4 RS. So it'll probably ah. be ever slightly lighter than now, what he's ridden in the past. But it has to be said, though, he loves a light bike, doesn't mm. he? He's really uh, nitpicked. He, he likes it to be perfect. And the bike that we've seen before, he's actually taken away all the paint on it. He's kept it really nice and naked carbon, which I think gives a really nice look to it and just added the stickers for the logos. Mm. And then he's also been known to use rim brake in the mountains to keep the weight down and those um, those Bora uh, yeah, the Cam Campagnolo, yeah, the Campagnolo wheels with Bora, tubular. Yeah, tubular wheels mm. in the mountains. That's right. And He kind of kept it to the weight limit as well, didn't he? Yeah, and in doing so, he has a bike that is as close to 6.8 as possible, mm. maybe 6.85 or something like that. Mm. But when he rides on the flatter stage, he is less preoccupied with weight and his power to weight ratio. And we typically see him using disc brakes and tubeless Campagnolo wheels that are slightly deeper um, and a bit heavier. And in this configuration, where weight is less important on the flat, his bike is typically around 7.2, 7.3 kilograms. And we, well, we actually uh, weighed one that has tubular wheels on, so not the tubeless wheels, so that adds a bit of weight. With disc brakes. With disc brakes, and that came out at 7.1 kilograms. Yeah. So, there you go. Is he going to be on that 6.8 on the dot then come tomorrow? I, I would bet. So I think we should work out then what, how other bikes compare um, and what their weight is. So moving on to Ineos Grenadiers. Now they use... What was the... that accent then? <laughs> Ineos Grenadiers. <laughs> they use the Pinarello F. Now, I wouldn't say the Pinarello F is known to be a super lightweight bike. No, it? it's not. But the interesting thing here is that they previously used, like in last year's Race and Race 4, mm. uh, the rim brake version. They did. Okay, and that was the Pinarello Especially F in the F12 mountains. as well. Mm. Yeah, and they were desperate to try and keep the weight down even further, so they used a, a special ultralight version of the bike uh, with a different carbon, and they paired it with lightweight Meilenstein wheels, mm. which are like the lightest wheels you can get, pretty much. Um, and this was all in a bid to get as close to 6.8 as possible. Um, so we, well, we've weighed one of the 2022 disc brake bikes. This was Luke Plapp's bike, who's yeah. the Aussie champion. Um, and this came in at 7.16 kilograms. So he was in the Durace C50s. So I reckon yeah. if you went shallower, you could, well, yeah. maybe save 200 grams or yeah, something. Yeah, shallower wheels would make a bit of difference. Would definitely help. Um, but the interesting thing is, is he's quite small. So Geraint Thomas, um, who's a bit bigger and the team leader, you yeah. know, rides a bigger bike, actually rides, rides the same size of Pinarello F as, as me. And that's where the comparison stops, isn't it, Ollie? Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I, so I can weigh that bike. I've got one. And I would say he, he's probably, his bike's going to be around 7.2, 7.3 kilograms. So it's still it's still close to 6.8, but it's not on the dot, is it? No, it's not. So I reckon we should have a look at another bike to see if it's close to that 6.8 limit. What about Thibaut Pino's bike? Ooh. Thibaut Pino is a Grand Tour specialist. He's actually been proven to perform in the mountains, so he's used to riding a light bike. And he's on the Lapier Zealus SL, so that's the uh, super light version, isn't it? It is, and he's quite, well, he's quite tall for a pro he's cyclist. He's a big rider. Yeah, he's 180 centimetres. Mm. Um, and so he rides a sort of larger bike than some. And as a consequence, his bike is a little bit heavier. It's coming in at 7.34 kilograms. Yeah. But the thing here is that at the moment, we weigh a lot of bikes when we go to races, and we find that that is typical. Like around seven to 7.3 is typical of what most riders are using, even mm. team leaders and climbers. Yeah, because I mean, when I was racing, I was riding the Canyon Air Road, and mine was sitting, and I'm a small rider, I ride a 51, so I get really small, and it was around you know, 7.3. So yeah. not many riders are in the six kilo mark, um, but I reckon we should check out one of the aero bikes from a sprinter and see yeah. if they've gone totally Well, sprinters outrageous. are much, much bigger riders, aren't they? They're less bothered about weight. Mm. So Dylan Kronovegan's bike. What was that accent? <laughs> 
So this is Dylan's bike, it's the Giant Propel. Now this is Giant's most aerodynamic bike. So how does this compare to the other bikes previously? Because this is all about aerodynamics. It's their speedy bike and one for the, you know, the high speeds. Now Dylan's bike, we weighed it and it raised 7.59 kilograms, which is actually the heaviest bike that we've seen. So obviously they've gone for speed over lightweight in the mountains. Yeah, and overall, there's, there's a trend that's happened in that over the last five to 10 years, bikes have become heavier. Yeah. But this is because they've also become more aerodynamic with more aerodynamic tube shapes and they've had hydraulic disc brakes added. And we're also increasingly seeing riders using tubeless tires and wheels over tubulars, which have lower rolling resistance, but they're slightly heavier, around 200 grams. Now, I guess what this means is bikes typically heavier than they were five to 10 years ago, which is actually something quite surprising. Yeah, it feels like a backwards step. Yeah. I mean, it was common uh, for mechanics to have to add weight to the bikes to make them up yeah. to the 6.8 legal limit. But, uh, so here, well, an example here is Naira Quintana's bike from 2018, five years ago, mm. or four years ago. Um, and this Canyon Ultimate with rim brakes, they were adding like little lead fishing weights down the seat tube. Just to make sure they hit that 6.8 kilogram yeah. limit. But that doesn't happen anymore, does it? Um, it doesn't, but these heavier bikes, although slightly heavier, are faster. Yeah, but how does that make any sense? Well, a light bike's a faster bike. Well, I thought, I thought you'd say that, Hank, but the answer is because of science. Uh, so basically weight is, is large, is overrated. Obviously yeah. weight does make a difference, but the important thing to remember is on a climb like Alpe d'Huez, which is a great example, it's in this year's Tour de France as a summit finish, um, five watts will make more difference than one kilogram. And at the speeds that the pros ride up the climb, you know, 25 to 30 kilometers an hour, because they're pros, but at that point, aerodynamics is significant. And so having a more aero bike makes a little bit of difference. And then lower rolling resistance from tubeless tires also makes a difference. And, you know, the bikes aren't a kilo heavier. They're typically just around 300 to sort of 400 grams heavier. So I guess what we're saying here is, the good news is you could buy a bike that is lighter then the bikes that they are riding in the Tour de France today, all you have to do is buy a bike from five years ago and maybe get a Rimbrook version. Yeah, you can pick up a nice used bargain. There cool. you go. But let us know your thoughts uh, on this. And we're also interested to know, well, what you think, are the bikes of 10 years ago that the pros were using better or nicer than the bikes that they're using now? Yeah, let us know. Is it all about weight, in your opinion? Time now for Hot Tech. And first up this week, we've got a new bike which was spotted at La Volta sur Rhone, being mm. ridden by Trek Segafredo riders Tom Squinge. Yeah, you did and that correctly. Jasper Steuven. Yeah. Uh, this is, well, a new Trek Madon mm. that has not been released, but it's being released tomorrow at the Grand Depart of the Tour de France in Copenhagen. What a way to launch a bike. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing here is it looks very similar to the previous Trek Madon until you look at it from the rear straight on and you see that it's got this big hole in where the seat post is, which is presumably to make it more aerodynamic. But as of the time of filming this, we've not had any numbers or official data released about the bike. We're sure that it's gonna to arrive tomorrow, but mm. yeah, pretty, pretty far out. Yeah, and we've also seen some hot tech uh, in the form of sunglasses. And um, we know Sagan, he likes to be quite flamboyant and he does so in his winning ways and his celebrations, but also in his designs too. And 100% his partners, uh, his sunglass partner, have also gone with their Tour de France, or a new Tour de France collaboration with him. And they've gone for this kind of tie-dye look on the frame. And then for the lenses, he's gone these anodized purple uh, they lenses. They smart, don't they? Which in the, in the classic big lenses. I think yeah. they look really cool. Anyway, um, make sure you check those out because yeah, they're pretty they're pretty wicked to film on us. Yeah, love sags. I hope he gets a I hope he gets a, a stage this year. Yeah, cool. I just want to see the Hulk back. Yeah. You cut that bit. On to aero news now, and Ollie, you absolutely love getting as aero as humanly possible, don't you? And so some good news for you, because at the Tour de France on the Grand Depart on the 13.2 kilometre time trial, tomorrow, Van der Poel is going to be sporting a new skin suit, and this one is said to be a banger. It's not just me that loves skin suits, though. The ladies, they love skin suits as well. Not the one I know. 
Anyhow, uh, Van der Poel's skin suit has not actually been done by his uh, team's clothing partner, Alps in Phoenix, which is Callas. It's actually been done in collaboration with Vortec, who are the guys at the sports engineering hub in Silverstone. Um, and they've devised the skin suit, right, which is supposed to be super, super aerodynamic and really high tech. £2,750 mm. if you want one. Yeah, it's said to be used to like a different or new material. That's mad, isn't it? It's so, so expensive. But £2,750 for a skin suit. I mean, and also, it's only about that big. You don't get much of it. Um, imagine crashing in that, though. That'd be, that's going to be expensive, isn't it? What's crazy is that's worth the same amount as, you know, a Peugeot 106. Yeah, well, yeah, but it gains, and he's going to be, well, he's been doing pretty well in time trials of, of late, Van der Poel, so he's got a chance on a short He's not one. the favourite. It's going to be Filippo Ganna. Yeah. Who also has some new tech in the form of the new Pinarello Belide, which mm. we saw uh, at the Tour de Suisse um, two weeks ago, mm. uh, being ridden by the, the Ineos team, including Garrett Thomas, on way to victory. But it was covered up with a, with a wrap. So you couldn't, it looked pretty cool. It had like Belide written all mm. over it, but you couldn't really see it that well. So it'd be nice to see that finally unveiled. You'd imagine that's the case. Again, no big details have been announced on this bike because it's not been officially released. But the big thing we can see is that it's now disc brake. The previous Belide was rim brake. And is the disc brake version more dynamic? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out tomorrow. Time now for Hank's favourite part of the show. It's the freaking bike ball! Now, you may be wondering why we've suddenly cut and Hank has disappeared. That's for good reason. Hank just can't be trusted with the bike vault, I'm afraid, and he gets far too excited and just super nices every single bike. So, I've done a fake bike vault with Hank, um, and now he's gone, and I'm going to do the actual bike vault. <laughs> Okay, so first up, this week's most super nice bike is from Paint Killer. It's a Pinarello F12. Check this out. This thing is absolutely off the charts. What an outrageous paint job that is with like dripping red all over it. It looks incredible. Um, however, this is a professional paint job that's been done on this bike, yet I can't forgive the fact that it's not in Biggie Smalls and the wheels aren't properly aligned. So uh, despite that being voted the most super nice bike, it officially only gets... Nice. Uh, next up, we have got a uh, specialized tarmac SL7 from Li Hao 0824. And it appears to be against some kind of desert rock background. But that is all lined up. It's Biggie Smalls. It's uh, got a very nice uh, crank set on there. One of the uh, uh, THM ones. That is, and Speedplay pedals as well. Very nice. Yeah, so that's. You made my life easy there. That's a super nice. Uh, next up, we've got a Canyon Air Road from Justice underscore Way. And he says, does gold make the bike even better? Uh, wow. That is absolutely stunning. And the wheels are aligned. The cranks are aligned. We're in just about in Biggie Smalls. Um, nice, clean background. I think the gold does make it look amazing. That is easy for me. That's a super nice. Uh, next up, Chow Ant. Uh, has a Cervelo S series chameleon. Wow, that's uh, again. I'm, is that a custom paint job on that? It's not sure, but it's in uh, it's in South Wales, in the uh, the Afan Valley. That is all. You ticked all the you've, you've, yeah, you've ticked the boxes there. That is um, that is that is that is a very nice bike. It's super nice. So, again, people are making my life very easy this week. Uh, Jeffrey K C Y eighty eight tarmac. SL7. We've got hunt wheels on there. We've got a big road to change. Not in Biggie Smalls. Weird jaunty angle. That looks like it could fall over at any moment. Um, also, I'm not sure what's going on with the saddle there. Tires aren't really aligned. I mean, that's a that is a super nice bike. You've got a clean background. You were so close. I'm afraid that's just a nice. And that also is uh, the end of the bike vault this week. Um, I'm now going to cut back with Hank. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, and if you have, then you know what to do. You can support the channel by liking and subscribing. And make sure you check out shop.globalcyclingnetwork because we've actually partnered with the Tour de France and we've got some limited edition official 
Tour de France merch, and there's also some bundle deals as well. So if you buy them in, in with a bottle as well, there's like 10% off. So yeah. make sure you check that out. And uh, well, we'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks team. All the best. Good luck. Bye.